Hello everyone, Jules here. Today I want to talk about a great book about Kabbalah that is actually one of the best books on Kabbalah and I wanted to talk about this today as well because it is going to be or it's already available in a second edition. So I have the first edition book here of Climbing the Tree by David Rankin and the subtitle is A Manual of Practical Magical Kabbalah. So here is the book. I'm going to talk about what's in the book and show some of the diagrams that are in the book as well. Uh, there's a foreword by Stephen Skinner and that in itself is a really good recommendation for this book. This first edition was published in 2005 and I don't think it had been available for quite a while since this first edition so I think it's really good news for people who are interested in getting this book that there is now a second edition available so that's good news. Um, I'm really happy with this book, I have been for quite a long time uh, so I don't think I personally I probably won't be getting the second edition but I wanted to tell people um, about this book and about the second edition that's available for people who are interested. So I'm going to talk about what's in the book and what I like about this book. Um, one of the particular things I like about this book is that it is concise uh, but it also has um, concepts in here that are not always included in other books about Hermetic Kabbalah. Um, for example, some of the concepts are, are mentioned um, by Alistair Crowley in some of his books and when you read some of um, Crowley's books you may stop and think oh what does he mean by this or that concept and some of the concepts for example that you find along the way like that tend not to be included in a lot of uh, general books about Hermetic Kabbalah but this book has um, a lot of those concepts so I liked that about the book straight away but I got this a few years ago. I've probably had this copy for about uh, 10 years now, something like that. But anyway, to talk about what's in the book. It has got, it starts off, I'm going to show the diagrams in, in a moment as I go along but I want to talk first of all about what's actually in the book. It starts off with a brief history of Kabbalah. Now, this is one of the best brief histories that I have also read. So I also like that about the book as well. It's really important um, to have some type of history of Kabbalah. And the reason for that is not only to put this into some historical context, but to differentiate between the three types of Kabbalah and this brief history of Kabbalah outlines that so uh, it gives some history to Jewish Kabbalah which is the first type of Kabbalah then it talks uh, further along in history about what became um, Christian Kabbalah so Kabbalah with a, with a C Jewish Kabbalah is with a K, letter K, and Christian Kabbalah with a letter C. And then he finishes by talking about Hermetic Kabbalah, which is Kabbalah with letter Q. So I'm really always glad to see that because a lot of people tend to think that there is not much distinction between the three types, but there are, there are a lot of differences between the three types of Kabbalah 
So I'm glad that he starts off with that. Then he talks about the structure of the Tree of Life. So he talks about the four worlds, which is quite commonly known with Kabbalah. And he talks about um, the three pillars and which is the um, black, white, black pillar, the white pillar and the middle pillar. Uh, he also talks a bit about Jacob's ladder, which is another concept that's not always included in books about Kabbalah. He also talks about the triads. And they are the three triangular parts of Kabbalah, of the structure. And then he talks about the seven palaces. Now, I, came ac I first came across the idea of palaces, the concept of palaces. That, that, that is something that is mentioned uh, in Crowley books. And for a long time, for the first few years of my study of Kabbalah, I wondered about the palaces, I thought, because I just couldn't find it in any, in any of the Kabbalah books that were around. I just could not find what these palaces were. So, yes, that's in this book, The Seven Palaces. He also talks about the veils of the tree. Now that is another one. I think another concept that I wondered about because there is the the abyss, the veil of the abyss, and people, you know, can find that in a lot of Kabbalah books. But there are other veils in the Kabbalah that was also mentioned in my readings of Crowley. And I, for a while, I was thinking, well, where are these? Where are these other veils? What are they? And it's included in this book. Then he goes into all of the um, other concepts and relationships within within the tree, which are not included in most Kabbalah books either. He also talks about the clippet, the clippot, and the Shekinah and the usual. He, he talks. He talks about um, the other concepts that may be um, known by other people in their from their books and things, but he, he's. He then goes into the parts of the soul and the parts of the soul are not always included in Kabbalah books either. So this is a great um, book for all of, the, all of the different structures in Hermetic um, Kabbalah. Then he goes into the types of things that are useful for magic. So he he talks about each of um, each sephira, each of the ten sephira, and for each of the sephira, he includes correspondences. Now it's the correspondences that are particularly used for magic. So. This is a really great book for that. Then he goes into as a separate chapter for ritual techniques. And ritual techniques is very much about uh, ceremonial magic. So he talks about uh, magical images and deity and the banishing ritual of the pentagram and the middle pillar exercise. Uh, he talks all about uh, also the lightning flash. Um, then there is a chapter on talismans. 
so Kabbalistic talismans, which again is, is all about magic, all about ceremonial magic. And then he's got uh, a separate um, chapter on meditations, which is, which, is a, which is a great inclusion. Okay, so now to just uh, show some of the diagrams that are in here. He just, before he, at the beginning, when he starts to talk about history, he's just got the usual sort of diagram of Kabbalah here, in, including Dart as well. These are the three triads that I was talking about before. He talks about the, the three triads that are in the structure of Kabbalah. So there's a diagram of the three of the three triads. And here is a diagram of the seven palaces, which is really important for people who are wondering about the seven palaces. And of course there's a description and explanation about that in here too, about how that works. And this is a diagram of the lightning flash. So this is one of the this is one of the best books on Hermetic Kabbalah, on the three pillars, got to show that as well. Here's the three pillars, black, the white and the middle pillar. Uh, when you get a foreword by Stephen Skinner, you know to, you know, you know to take notice of, of this book. Stephen Skinner would not write a foreword for just any book on Kabbalah. So yeah, it's it's probably it's, it's one of my favourite books on on Hermetic Kabbalah. But I just think it's it's right up there. It's probably one of the top five books that have ever been written about Kabbalah. So yes, I do recommend this book for people who are interested in Hermetic Kabbalah in particular and people who want to use this for magic. This of course was also the magic of the Golden Dawn, but the Golden Dawn isn't specifically mentioned all that much in this book because, uh, well it's, it's mentioned in the history of course, when the, when um, the history of Kabbalah is mentioned when um, the, the history covers the later the later history where it gets to Hermetic Kabbalah being created. Uh, yeah, it's just a great book. I wanted to talk about this today because it is one of the best books on Hermetic Kabbalah. But I also wanted to talk about this because. It's now available in a second edition. Um, so, Climbing the Tree of Life by David Rankin. I'll put some details below the video. And I think this book is really worthwhile. I think it's so good that if you only wanted to buy one book about Hermetic Kabbalah, this is probably the best book to get. So I'll put some details below the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.